not trying to kill you, Harry. We're losing a lot of blood. If I don't do something right now, you're gonna die. Some retirement this turned out to be. How you doing? Well, my head's a little clearer. Uh, how long have I been out? I don't know. A day or so. I can't go back. I'd rather die here than spend the rest of my life in jail. Yeah, um, I've been giving that some thought. I think you suffered enough. Hell, I even got to shoot you. Twice. I think the Toker should be able to find a nice planet for you. Thanks, Jack. Sure, Harry. This is David Reed for GateWorld.net, and I'm here with Mr. Tom Macbeth, Colonel Harry Mayborn, ex-colonel, ex-criminal, ex-convict, and now resident of another planet. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little long-winded intro there for you, but uh, this guy, man, what a history you've had on this show. Did you have any idea you'd be living with this character as long as you have? Uh, well... Uh, when I auditioned for it, they said it was possibly recurring, uh, and then the first, the first uh, couple of years, I think I only did one a year, mm -hmm. maybe two. But it was, he was just the small pain, pain in the ass, an ID guy in a uniform, and a pretty, relatively boring character to play. Uh, uh -huh. Luckily, they kept writing stuff, and I got to fall out of uniform. Right, right. Do you like the direction that they went with that? Uh, I've never really. Yeah, I suppose I do like it. Um, uh, I'm only hesitating because it, it's a very small part of my life, uh, Stargate, and over mm -hmm. the six or seven years, I've only done ten episodes, so it does not consume me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I enjoy going back there as an actor and uh, working with those group of people uh, a lot, and I'd love to do it more. Um, but the character only does raise his ugly head every, uh, well, once a year or twice a year, and last year not at all. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. What's the uh, single most rewarding thing about being a part of the Stargate phenomenon? I guess a couple of years ago was, uh, was I'd, I'd done enough episodes by then, and there were, there were enough in reruns. <clears throat> Uh, I was sitting in Penticton, which is a small town uh, inside in the what they call the Okanagan in British Columbia, <clears throat> having brunch on a Sunday, and two young boys came up and asked if if I was Colonel O'Neill. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I killed myself laughing and said yes. And then we, we had a very nice talk and a chat and. They watched every Saturday morning. They watched two different shows: that Stargate and something else. I can't remember what it was. And it was their favorite shows. And uh, <clears throat> that was it was an absolute delight. Also, going to the conference over. In, I went to the conference a couple of years ago in London, and <clears throat> I was just amazed. I was amazed at at the sort of the fan reception because I'd never been to a conference before. And, uh, the fan reception in in London was. Just phenomenal, not ju not just for me, but for the show and for the for Amanda who was there and Michael who was there. Uh, it was phenomenal. This group of 1,500 people that oh, wow. were partying for a weekend, and I'm sure the party is an attraction as well. Uh, 
but just their interest in the show and their willingness to to come there and spend all the money they do and get involved uh, was a it was a real eye opener for me. I just sit here in Vancouver largely and. Uh, Although I travel a bit to do stage work, I don't travel much for the film business. Most of this film work I do is here in Vancouver. And rarely <coughs> in the film work do you get parts like you can in theater that you really get to use your acting muscles. Mm -hmm. Here it's like more you have to restrain yourself more often. You have to, in the film business, you, have, you can't play yourself. It's usually not your story. Uh, one of the great things about being in it this long is when it comes around to one of my episodes now I'm a very integral part of the story so right uh, and being involved in the whole episode I could go from point A to point B a big arc acting arc, so I can have a great time good we're just in the middle of a bar here while we're in the back room of a bar <laughs> for all those who don't room. know and it's a beautiful day outside <laughs> why we're here partly my fault sorry <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, you started off in uh, Enigma, and just sort of like, oh yeah, here's this guy who's going to sweep the uh, Tolans away and put them away, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna live better than some Americans and all and all that stuff. And then now, my gosh, it's eight years later. So, um, do you like the direction Mayborn and O'Neill's relationship developed? It's been a great pleasure that it's it's got as loose as it has and as fun as it has. Um, it has, it has had nothing to do with me. Uh, perhaps it's had something to do with with RDA. I don't know. Uh, but the writers, once they sort of got out of the uniform thing, mm -hmm. they really changed a lot. And I think they had more fun. The writers had more fun, and I certainly had more fun. Uh, even in the uniform, it was still okay. But I was just more like a gnat rather than a <laughs> a character who was really useful on the show. Uh -huh. That became kind of neat. Enjoy that part. Um, you've appeared in probably a dozen episodes. You said ten. I think ten. Okay. Uh, which one do you center out as being your favorite? Well, it's not so much uh, one in particular. It's one part of one. Okay. And it was the ending to, and I don't really, I can't put the names. Okay. To one okay. <laughs> episodes, but it was the very, it was the tag scene they used uh, when. Uh, Colonel O'Neill had got me out and somehow let me go. Okay. And I was down in the South Seas somewhere. <laughs> and as I danced down the beach with the with the extra who had crossed my path, and that whole ending was so accidental and so much fun. And out of that, I think they've added more fun to or, uh, to uh, Mayborn out of that. And I, it, it was that moment that was a real change for me. And it, really made me feel much more at home on set because it took everything the crew could not to kill themselves laughing and and they did <laughs> once they cut they did laugh and they laughed big and I knew then that it was going to be fun to be part of it was more fun to be part of this group and I didn't have to I didn't have to feel so much like a guest I could feel more like I was part of the family mm -hmm. so it was sort of that moment in there that, where that happened that was chain reaction it was chain, chain. yes okay <laughs> <laughs> I was like I know that one. But you're kind of like uh, John Delancey was on Star Trek. You know, come in every once in a while, uh, sort of take the temperature of the show, and get everyone's blood stirred up again, and then take off again. That's that's certainly how they stuck him in there originally. Okay. Uh, the last couple times, it just seems that I'm just hooking up with Richard Dean. Although the next episode, which I start in next Thursday, is, it changes a real a lot. Okay, we'll ask about that in a minute. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, was or is there a direction you would have liked to, the character to go but didn't? No, that's... Uh, it's not part of... You'll go mad as an actor if you start thinking in those terms. Absolutely mad. You, uh, you, you take what's there and you, you... You take what's on the page and you try and make the most of it. You try and... You try and find something. You don't find the. You don't look for the easy choices. You find some quirky. You try and find the quirky stuff, the fun stuff that uh, really makes it lift off the page and become entertaining. And uh, to start wishing that they would write it in another way. When sometimes you'll you'll get the script and you'll look at it and you go, Oh God! And you'll wish they had written something else. But you'll, there's nothing particular in your mind. In my mind. Uh, 
No, I, uh, as an actor, you just take what's there mm -hmm. and, and try and go with it. Was there anything that was written where you actually went, oh, God, I can't believe this, and it was executed, and you were like, wow, that was good? Anything that you had doubts about that you turned around and it's like, that's, that's great? Throughout the, throughout the ten episodes or whatever, uh, every time I got a new script, I would just say, this is, this is not the character that I know. This is not... This is not the character I played in the last episode. Uh -huh. This is a totally different character. Uh -huh. And then I would just start embracing the thing that was there on the page. Uh -huh. And then I'd get to the next episode and, that I did. And uh, again, I, I could see no resemblance between the characters. Uh -huh. So ultimately, I, uh, I just decided that, that as I kept adding on these things that they were writing, it, the character actually became much fuller, became huge. Mm. Well, not huge, but became full. Okay. So all these little pieces of him being different melded together into this one great big, yeah. like multi-faced character. If uh, Harry hadn't been court-martialed, uh, do you think he would have become as interesting a character? No. No? Did that well, changed the whole thing? Well, uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it just freed the writers up to just go anywhere then. Was that the idea behind it? I don't know. I, I'm just an actor. I have no say in anything. <laughs> right. uh, unless you're a regular on the show, you, on any show, you have... If you're a guest actor, just close. If you're a guest actor, um, you have very little say of... I mean, you have some say, but yeah. not a lot, about where the character's going in the big way. I mean, you can, you can change the odd line and stuff. They're fine with that kind of stuff. But. Um, some fans have speculated that uh, Mayborn has a thing for Carter. Uh, what do you have to say about this? Well, early I got interviewed, I don't know, after the third episode or something, and, and I think it was in the second episode that we had a, uh, there was a scene where I was working with Carter, and uh, there was a, uh, the episode I was working with Carter, and there was a scene that they uh, ran out of time and decided they didn't need. But it was a scene where uh, it showed Mayborn sort of having this little... He finally found some little human element in himself. Aww. And it was towards Carter. And it was like the first time that he felt maybe he was um, attracted to someone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I mentioned that in that interview and then I think I've mentioned it a couple times, so it's probably come as much from reading stuff around the outside edges as not. But I, in the upcoming episode, I have some moments with Carter, and she's just really, she's just really hard nosed with me the whole time, and I'm hoping I can get a squeeze a, a new line in the end, <laughs> just just to keep that little pot boiling. Do you, do you regret that that scene was not shot? Do you think it would have added a dynamic to the character that would have changed his direction even more? Uh, no, I think I think that sort of opened him up to the human element. Uh, the scene that the scene that followed, um, he had to be nice to all. He was nice to all the people at the table. So right. it was uh, sort of a new a new uh, side to Mayborn that I hadn't seen before. Yeah, at the end of Foothold. Actually, things looked like they were turning around. I mean, I mean, O'Neill was actually civil to Mayborn yeah. and all this stuff. And then the next episode comes around, and it just flips it all upside down. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's been said you're practically the opposite of uh, your character. Is that the truth? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, he must be part of me somewhere. <laughs> uh, I don't operate in the world like him. Although, <laughs> although in the last couple I've, ha I've had a lot of fun, and he's a little goofy, and he has no uh, he has no aim in life except to have a pretty good time. Yeah. And he seems to be, at times he seems to, that seems to happen for him. So that side of him is certainly me. It's like once Jack got him out of jail. It there was this whole different personality and a whole different side to him, as if he had learned something in prison. And like, there was there was more to his life than um, than all this stuff that he had done. Yeah, I think once he got deserted by his cronies, uh -huh. uh, 
I remember him. Uh, he did. He did talk something about being deserted by them and really having nothing to fall back on. And, and I think you know, if I had a chance to to go back and shoot that stuff again, it would mean more to me. Really, in retrospect. Yeah. Uh, well, it would mean something different, knowing where Mayborn's gone to now. Right. Right. But uh, certainly, it had something to do with choices. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Mayborn was someone uh, that Jack at times would trust with his life and then turn around and be the last person that he would ever plan on trusting. What was your favorite part of this two-faced character to play? What has been? Well, I think, the, I think it's that, uh, that sort of uh, edge that, that, w the, that we walk between Jack and I. That, that, um, I can't stand you, but at some level, I have a lot of respect for you. Right. And I do actually have, grudgingly have a good time when you're around, and things seem to seem to work out. Right. So he has to he has to eat some crow. Speaking of crow. <laughs> speaking of the crows, and I think Mayborn loves it when Jack has to eat a little crow. Right. Uh, and Mayborn has to eat his own as well. You know, thing the world didn't work out the way he planned, mm -hmm. um, but obviously he's adaptable, mm -hmm. and. Uh, has found his joy in life and and even in finding those things that he enjoys uh, I think he knows at some level Jack and Jack understands what that's all about what was that? that was just wrong on so many levels it's such a treat working with Richard Dean because because we do we do have a lot of fun together, and and perhaps another actor would have taken that early Mayborn stuff and the, the same results wouldn't have happened. I don't know. The characters uh, are great foils for each other. Yeah, uh, as harmless as harmless as the banter is, it's uh, there's I, I don't know if it's just macho. Male stuff underneath. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. <laughs> that urge to shoot you has come back, <laughs> and you did get to so <laughs> twice. <laughs> Tell us about that's right. Tell us about uh, working with with Richard Dean Anderson. Well, he's one of the smartest actors I've ever worked with. I mean, the guy is. He's he's, he's so intelligent. He's so educated. Uh, you would never think he would be an actor. Uh, as a young guy, as a young actor, he was probably a, a hell of a guy to have to deal with. Just because <laughs> directors don't like smart actors. Mm -hmm. well, most of them don't. Uh, and I think, I think Richard Dean uh, was great for him. To have that long career he's had, uh, working, you know, and I think he, I think he put together the, the group that came together from MacGyver, and then went on to Stargate. I think is a, a group that respects him and respects his mind and respects his point of view, and um, they've all been successful because of it. Uh, I'm not saying they're simply riding on his talent because he's got a mm. tremendous amount of that, mm. uh, because they all bring their talents to it. Uh, but I'm sure he's had a lot to say about how MacGyver went and how Stargate has evolved. Uh, and actors don't often have that kind of power. And sometimes when they do get it, there it was the wrong person to give it to. So mm -hmm. right. um, I also love his absolute irreverence for the process of acting. Uh, he does learn his lines. He doesn't bump into the furniture. Uh, <laughs> But he's always alive with the lines. He's, he, know, he knows exactly what he's saying. But he sort of throws out, he throws away all the acting stuff. And he's at his best when he's having fun. Right. Uh, that's when it. That's when it really flies. And not just when I'm there, but when I when I see <laughs> the shows. Right. When he's when he's having fun. When he's being witty and making bad jokes. <laughs> Uh, 
that's for me when the show really, really works well. Do you have any particular memories after the over the past uh, eight years of of when you two really clicked and mm -hmm. this was just this was just the best thing that that could be happening for the show and or 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 um, just fond memories of uh, Richard. Well, I remember the the, the uh, in whatever episode it was again. I'm sorry, I <laughs> should know these better. I guess it's the first time he got me out of jail after I'd been sentenced to die. And we went up to the senator's house. Chain reaction. And she asked who we were, and he said Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> That's right. And that was right out of the blue. We, really? He never talked about that before. Uh, maybe he did it in the rehearsal. I don't know. But okay. And because he's a, a producer as well, the line stays. Wow. And that's what's so much fun about it. It becomes... Uh, it's when he does those kind of things that I feel totally comfortable with because he feels comfortable in doing it around me. And um, maybe, uh, maybe the surprise on my face is something that kills him. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> when he does it. Uh, most of my life I've worked with directors and I've, I've never been in the position that he's in. Um, and I just enjoy it so much to see him take advantage of it and do it well. Mm. Ha has the relationship mm. with him impacted that of the characters in the last eight years anyway? Well, I, I, I think it has influenced the writer, certainly. Mm. Um, and I, I, I guess that's all I can say. Okay. So I, I probably could say some more. I don't know if I should. <laughs> I do know that uh, one, of the, one of the producers, John Smith, has mm. said to me, uh, you know, when you're on the set, uh, when you're on the set, uh, Richard's always up. He always really enjoys having me here. And, oh, what a nice uh, compliment. And we enjoy having Richard up, so you'll be back. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope Richard doesn't get his laptop working and hear me say that. <laughs> um, is there something you would like to see happen to this character before he takes his final bow? Well, I something think this one way? coming up is the final bow. You think? Uh, yeah. I thought maybe the last one was where uh, we came off that planet. Well, we didn't actually come off the planet. We were rescued. We saw the ship come over. Right. Paris and I lost. was. And he said he'd talk to the Tok'ra and maybe they'd look after me. And I thought, well, I guess that's my goodbye. Um, and last year I didn't show up again. Right. And then they didn't even know if they were going to do the next, the following season. So but now they have, and um, I'm a part of the, a part of that season. So. Uh, I think this is this is probably Mayborn's goodbye. What do you most look forward to about this episode? Uh, getting through the first day, and then I can relax. Oh, really? Is that always tough, tougher? Uh, yeah, uh, because I don't do this every day. Because I don't do it every week, every month even. Sometimes I go months without working. Yeah. So that first day back is always um, is always a little nerve-wracking. Um, you always hope you know your lines. Uh, it's just nervy. You just you just are nervy. It'll be great to get back and see them all. For, for one, I, I run into the odd one once in a while. Um, I'm also I work on a Thursday. Then my next day is actually on a Sunday at the Stargate Golf Tournament. Oh. <laughs> and then I work Monday again. So by the time I get to my second day, I'll be well relaxed. And, okay. Yeah, so it's like this coming week, you start that? Uh, we start a, a week, uh, a week yesterday, six days. I oh, have yeah, before okay. I start. Yeah. Okay. You're definitely looking forward to that. Um, yeah, in a lot of ways. Uh, in a lot of ways, the people and a Stargate and just working. <laughs> right. Yes. Is it going to be? You think it's going to be a bittersweet experience? Not for, I don't think so. You don't think so? I'm, I'm a pretty practical guy. <laughs> when the show closes, I'm usually glad the show closes. I'm not talking about necessarily Stargate, but stage shows. Uh, it's always nice. It's always nice when you've you've done what you can and you've done what you're allowed to do. And Are you, you move uh, on. 
Are you open to more appearances in season eight if that's a possibility? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. Good. Are, they, are they talking season eight now? Oh, this is season eight. I thought it was season seven. Uh, all right. Well, there's, there's still some possibility of not all the episodes for season eight have been nailed down. And they were throwing around one where the O'Neill clone and Mayborn got together, and uh, it was called <laughs> You Ain't Jack. And um, oh my! Uh, Michael Greenberg pitched the story actually, right. and uh, it never apparently has not come to fruition because uh, Michael Welsh, who plays the O'Neill clone, has his own series right now, and that's that, just started right. back this week. So, but we <laughs> thought it would be a great story. But, it uh, would be. But. Uh, <laughs> So. so now you, you're saying you're saying this is season eight that they're shooting right now? Yes. Well, I thought it was season seven. That nope. just shows you how <laughs> out of the loop I can get. Yeah, season seven was the one that you did not appear in, right. unfortunately. Okay. Um, but yeah. But uh, almost all the episodes are nailed down except like the last four. Right. So we never never know. Is do you think uh, you, you said that the uh, episode "It's Good to Be King" has closure to it? Is there any sign that it could lead to somewhere else? I don't hold any hope for that. No, I don't die. But that's, <laughs> as a, and you know, as a Canadian actor working in, this isn't necessarily an American series, although it's sold in America. It's, mm -hmm. it's been Canadian all the way through. Um, as a Canadian actor working in a largely American business that happens here in Vancouver, uh, if uh, usually you die. Yeah. You usually die, and. Um, as long as I started, that was always great in Stargate that I never died. So a lot of people uh, don't have that luxury. I always figured, <laughs> I, oh, I'm coming back. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, any closing thoughts to the uh, fans who have been watching you for for uh, seven plus <clears throat> years now? Well, I don't know how you could pick me out of that that huge uh, that huge volume of material there. Um, uh, and I, I, I do apologize for not knowing as much about Stargate as I probably should. Uh, but because I haven't, because it hasn't been a part of my life, uh, a huge part of my life, I think I've got it in a good place. Uh, I could go back and look at everything and go, oh yes, I remember that, I remember that. I do remember most of it. And I do have all the tapes at home and I have watched them all. And I actually hadn't done that till last year. And, uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> Tom Beth, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for the camera work, so. <laughs>
Okay. And then the gold are coming back because, of, see, if I knew all the ins and outs of the whole Stargate world, I can tell you exactly what's happening. Okay. But apparently, apparently things are things are collapsing around the universe somewhere, and the, the the bad guys are having to go back to where they were before, and that means they're coming back to this particular world. Okay. Uh, and this world has to be saved. Okay. And he knows it's prophesied that someone's going to come and save them. Okay. And lo and behold, it's the team. Sure. <laughs> and I should have known it would be them. Okay. Well, very cool. Very cool. Definitely look forward to that. Um, will scenes between uh, Mayborn and O'Neill be minimal with his schedule, or will they try to go all out and make use of him as much as possible? Well, um, he does show up in this episode. He does travel off, off, er, off Earth. Uh, as a general, mm -hmm. so yeah, he's going to be there, and um, we have a bit of time together. Yeah, good, good. So fans will not be disappointed despite his shooting schedule. No, they won't. Good, <laughs> good.